So today I want to talk uh, affordable power monitoring and many of you will have seen these kind of units. Uh, this one cost about $11 and it was bought off eBay. Uh, it does 3.68 kilowatts and it's got a range of parameters. It has a battery in there and apparently the chip in there is quite good. Um, but uh, if we turn it on you can see it's an LCD display, which um, many researchers have found is a little bit difficult to see um, on camera. And it does this thing of turning off periodically. The good thing is that the battery keeps the uh, power logging accumulation, accumulation um, in memory. Uh, and you can go between your different functions here, kilowatt hours, volts, amps watts low, watts high, and that is cost in kilowatt hours um, total, I guess. Uh, just goes round in a loop. Um, and this one, interestingly, has this issue where it's got one of these European slogs, uh, sockets that doesn't have the earth hole here. So that when we have a connection like this, we can't actually put this in here. Just it won't go, so you need to get a different type of socket with the earths uh, here and here. Um, and I think that's uh, for the higher rated 16 amp um, sockets. Anyway, um, that's this one. So for about $11, you may have seen this one. Now, we have some power monitors um, that we're going to be using in the up-and-coming te tests. One is the PCE 830, uh, which does three-phase and so on, but that's about $1,500, and it's not really practical for everyone to use in their experiments. Uh, we also have a, a Tektronix PA1000, which uh, Alan uh, Goldwater has been using in um, California. And again, we'll be using those on, uh, that on these tests. However, it's again uh, a pretty expensive piece of kit, um, uh, way above a thousand uh, new. So, not really practical for a lot of you out there for your experiments. However, I came across this unit here. It's uh, called Hopi Energy Saving Lamps Tester. Well, <laughs> um, that's one thing it's marketing itself as. But it um, looked really interesting. Uh, it can do 4.4 uh, kilowatts, although it says here 4.5 uh, on the packet there. Um, and it was about $80 delivered. So let's take a look and see what you get for your money uh, on the back. It's uh, got some more Chinese. It looks like it's got some software there. So let's have a look what we've got in here. So it's got a basic instruction manual so showing how you go through the menu systems and the layout and parameters put that over there okay so I'm not entirely sure why everyone seems to wrap things up in plastic makes you feel good about it I guess when you buy it um, oh there's a CD uh, with some software so I'll have a look at that uh, that's the unit here okay and uh, big fat power adapter um, and yeah so here it has a uh, uh, mini USB micro USB to USB um, and uh, that apparently looks like goes into the top here apparently we can put that into a computer and uh, the software which I guess is on here uh, will allow us to log uh, the data on the computer. So we'll have a look at that. It's one of these funky sockets where you can put pretty much anything in the world into it. So that makes things easy. Um, okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so first thing I noticed, uh, like the other one, it had um, no hole here. This didn't have as well, but what I could do is I could get a screwdriver in here and just pull the tag on one side out and it had a hole underneath and this actually enables me to plug this in here uh, and so on and 
let's fire it up. Okay, some initialization. And then uh, we are getting, oh, don't, do I really need that in there? <laughs> we are getting some nice bright displays. Um, and we have current, which there's no current at the moment, nothing's plugged in. The voltage on the line, 222.7. Two, two and the frequency there, no power factors, nothing plugged in, no power, no kilowatt hours. Cool. Let's have a look when we plug something in. Okay, so what I've done here is I've plugged in this uh, studio light, which you can see here. This nice diffuse light. Uh, and it's reading 0.181 of an amp, uh, same voltage roughly, same frequency, got a bit of a power factor there, and uh, total watts 22.8, and I think there's a switch for the different power rating on the back of this, so let's see if I can turn that up there, should have got brighter, uh, which has changed the exposure on the camera, so you can actually see some flickering going on there with the... Uh, uh, interleaved uh, refresh rate on that but uh, really you do not see that when you are looking at it with your own eyes um, so I'm going to turn that back off so you can see the current went up there to uh, 606 whatever I guess if I move this here there you go you can see that uh, I've just blocked a bit of the light so the camera's adjusted its exposure. Okay, so I'm going to turn that back off again, um, like so. And I guess if you turn it off completely, uh, there we go, cuts right out. Okay, so turn that back on. Um, mm -mm. And you can see the socket here is a standard UK socket. Um, I have an adapter here uh, for uh, UK to European. So we'll see if that works. We'll plug it in there. Yep, so that seems okay. You can put an American or whatever in there. So I'm gonna dial this down, uh, move it out of the way. So it's not affecting the luminosity uh, exposure of the camera too much. Okay, so that is it on its own. And so if you did like live YouTube streaming or you wanted to um, do uh, periodic uh, screen grabs and upload those, this would be very powerful because uh, it gives you the amps, the volts and the watts. Um, seems to be sampling at about once every second there. Before we get on to the software, uh, I wanted to see what the comparison was between these two. So um, here we can see the, I've uh, just basically daisy chained these. So this is the uh, power to the light. Uh, this is the $11 unit and this is the $80 unit. So yeah, you can see the like elapsed time at the top here. Um, it does show you the hertz at the same time here. Um, it seems to be rounded um, to 50 hertz, whereas this is 49.99, uh, whether this is actually more accurate, I don't know. 222.6, um, 222.4, they seem 222.4, so they're basically in line with each other. Um, uh, let's go through the function here. So now you see the awkwardness here. We've got the power factor down here, 0 0.53, we've got 0 0.52, six there, five two eight, um and the amps are heart point one nine oh here, point one nine eight. So it seems to be a little bit more here. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of current draw from this unit um uh, additionally to here. So point one nine one point one nine oh okay. <laughs> there seems to be maybe a little less um uh, but very little difference between them. Uh, that could be expected. Uh, so 22.5 watts, 22.46, 44, 43. Um, 
So yeah, it just appears a little bit more accuracy here. It looks like the float, it's always got four digits and there's a floating decimal. Um, so that gives you a, a much better idea of what's going on. I imagine if this was kilowatts, the, uh, the decimal would move away. Um, so that, that's quite nice. Um, yeah, 23.5 watt, that's the high watts there. 23.5, so it's a high watt during the period. Uh, there's no cost settings in there. So that's the actual watts here, rather than the high or the low, 22.3, 22.25. So um, pretty comparable uh, in terms of that measurement. I think it might be nice to uh, have these in line, certainly when we do the bucket test. Um, this one, for instance, uh, we'll be able to just plug the resistive heater in, and when we do the dummy test again, um, and we could have that as well as one of our super accurate uh, uh, power monitors. And for those more simple tests where it's just resistive heating, uh, we could verify the accuracy of these units compared to um, the much more expensive units uh, and even likewise during the active run we could see over a, a long period of time whether these units are um, reasonably comparable for the particular reactor that we're testing uh, and if it is the case and they are um, successful uh, technologies uh, people might be able to just purchase something for say eighty dollars or even less potentially uh, to do their verification um, with a certain level of uh, trust in the results. So um, let's see how these perform compared uh, to highly accurate um, uh, power analysis. Okay, I'm going to install the software and uh, see what that looks like. Like any USB thing, once you've installed the drivers, which I've done, which was relatively easy, uh, make sure before you start the software again that you plug in the uh, USB lead. Okay, when you start the software, um, it comes up with a port setting thing here. So uh, it has a USB to serial um, port adapter thing. I didn't do anything really, it just as long as it's plugged in and the driver's already been installed when the device is plugged in, this pops up. So you can click on that and go next and the software launches. Okay, so the interface looks really simple. Uh, you have a record per second, a start and a stop, uh, and then you appear to have a uh, uh, voltage, power factor, active power, annual power consumption, active energy, and reactive energy. You've got working hours, frequency, and hours day up there. Um, and analysis here. So let's see what happens when we press start. So I'm going to click start. Actually, let's change that to uh, a one second interval. Um, press start. Okay. So there you go, it's collecting power. Um, looks like the working hours is 20 minutes and 20 seconds since I did a reset. Um, seems pretty flat on the reactive energy. The current is going up and down a little bit. Voltage up and down a little bit. Not a lot, so I'm going to go and turn the um, light on and off. Uh, let's see what happens. And off. And on. And higher power. Okay, and off. Oh, sorry, that's lower power. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> and off. And on to higher power. Uh, 
Okay, so that's basically that. Power factor, voltage, that's the current going up and down. So I guess that's what you would expect really. And there we go. So under here we can see um, data. It's just sort of dumping it there. I wonder if it's writing it to a file. We can cut and paste that, I guess, if we paused it. So that's one way that you can use this uh, tool um, with the graphing. Um, and I guess if we change this to read every period of time, uh, five seconds, it would just put a point there every five seconds. So uh, not thousands of samples a second uh, as we're used to, um, but um, better for kind of standard resisted loads. So the PDF uh, that I'll give a link to, uh, it's for the 9800 20 amp version, which is what we have, and uh, it has some detail about the uh, functionality. A lot of this is the same as we see in the paper that came with it. Um, the, the, the operating instructions but additionally it has this uh, comms protocol for the uh, communications port so you could maybe integrate this into um, uh, other equipment like a Raspberry Pi or whatever to help collate all your data together I wonder how fast you can sample it then uh, given the board rates 9600 um, is one second the highest sample rate? I don't know. Maybe it could be much, much higher in that instance and you could do a, an average. Whether it's averaging internally, I don't know. Um, anyway, that is the Hopi 9800 um, power monitor could be a solution for your replication needs.